But we then found a uh, cheaper place to go uh, watch. What did you guys end up watching it on? Uh, mushrooms. It was actually just a mushroom. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You guys decided to cut the middleman out and just do mushrooms. Right. <laughs> we just took a bunch of mushrooms and figured yeah. the whole documentary out. Honestly, <laughs> same difference, really. Re honestly, 100% true. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ. If this movie really touched me, man. Really? Think about I the cry, like though. <laughs> I, cr I cried in, in two different parts, man. Holy shit, dude. Yeah, man. Well, just to set it up for the people watching, we're talking about Fantastic Fungi. Mm. The documentary that really has been being shoved down the throats of anybody who has ever posted anything environmental on <laughs> any... If you've ever even liked something that was like a green, anything green, and that wasn't St. Patty's, you got a million ads for Fantastic Fungi. They're really trying to push that agenda, baby. Yeah, Big big Mushroom was pushing it. Big Mushroom, bro. Well, I went into the expectation that it would be primarily about psychedelic mushrooms. And right. then it started off with the fundamentals and the backstory. So I, thought, I was like, oh, maybe I'm just a crackhead. Let me tell you something, the first 20 minutes, bro, of it just explaining the life of a mushroom, mm -hmm. I gotta go rewatch because the whole time I'm thinking, just get to the good stuff. Just get to the good stuff. <laughs> really? I thought, you know, like what I thought was when the movie opened was like, hi, we are mushrooms and we're <laughs> like under the ground and you don't even know about us. I'm yeah, like, that I, have did, a, I have a gripe about. Did they no, get not... Kevin's impression of a white girl? and then get a white girl to read his impression of a white girl. I was like, this is unbelievable. No. Let's, I mean, listen, without being, you know, sexist or misogynist, come on, man. A mushroom is a dude for sure. <laughs> no, exactly. A mushroom is like the guys that we meet in the rest of the video. Like well, there's nobody into mushrooms that sounds like Brie Larson. Maybe the female part is like that neural network that they build, but like the thing we know as a mushroom, it's a fucking dick that shoots out spores. Thank I mean, you. how much more? I mean, that was one of the things also that I wanted to see that would be great to, to like cut into the video because there's all these great time lapses of mushrooms growing and then somebody should just nuts. cut like a dick getting hard in time lapse. Oh. <laughs> there Yo, are, there are awesome. mushrooms though that are shaped like vaginas. Did you see those, John? Yeah. I did. And if you eat, if, if they say if you uh, eat those, you automatically have a bad trip. <laughs> <laughs> depending on what, depending on what nationality you are, and like the, like the uh, stereotypes that go along with that nationality. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. No, listen, uh, I, I talk about this to Josh, and Josh talks about this to me. And I don't know why I'm saying this out loud. I'm reverting back to my always, but the hardest thing to be in this world is probably a woman. Mm. Mm. It, it, and, and I think they talk about it in Judaism. So, uh, I mean, don't blame I know, this on the Jews, Kevin. I, I know they're talking about it in Judaism because I never hear the end of it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Actually, that's funny that you bring that up. I was at a, a a wedding for my friend who's like very who's more Jewish than Josh or me combined. I mean, whoa. really, really Jewish. Uh, not Orthodox, but just more Jewish than Josh by far, and way so more. He's, well, he's wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. When I think back at the wedding, I'm like, oh yeah, I guess so. Uh, but they were like reading from this, like, like the marriage. They had like instead of the marriage vows, there were these special, like, I'm guessing Orthodox marriage vows that kind of um, say what what uh, Kevin was just thinking, which was like. It was like the covenant between man and woman, and it like made some acknowledgments. Like, listen, you got to deal with some shit as a woman in life, and that's why like your husband is going to come in as a counterpart to like help out with some of that stuff. That was like in the um, sort of like to break down like the 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 um, Bible talk of it. Mm. Right. Do you know uh, about that, Josh? Uh, yeah, he knows all about it. <laughs> You're like, don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Li listen, uh, I'm gonna turn into, into the Jewish hour, but you know my Hasidic. Listen, aunt, I know I'm doing the show with you anyway, so like <laughs> my Hasidic aunt when I was a teenager, she told me, you know, like Kabbalistic beliefs in Judaism, like Judaism, like you people know, like the 
the bagels, the, matzah, yeah, yeah, haggling right. over things, right. becoming a right. lawyer. Right, right. Those are the main four main and stuff like that. But my aunt, she had told me, and again, like I'm not a Torah scholar, but she told me that uh, Kabbalistic belief in Judaism is that when, you know, we believe in reincarnation and that you get reincarnated over and over again as a man until you figure it out and then you get reincarnated as a woman. Mm. The consolation prize is what's yeah. known in Judaism as the consolation prize. A lot of tests. Um, but this doc was, I mean, do you really believe he took like Thank a you. bag of shrooms? Thank you. I knew. And was exactly. like, and was like, stop stuttering. Yes, I absolutely do believe that. And that was the other part that I, I teared up in. That's 100% true. Okay, so, you, you, this, so in this documentary, and I'm, this is not ruining the documentary because like, um, but the main character, so like Brie Larson comes out of this documentary at the top and is like, we're mushrooms. We're living <laughs> underground and we've been doing it for billions of years. And you guys don't even know about us, but we're going to save the world. The and then world. As soon as the, as soon as the intro ends, you're like, you meet this like fat, bald, bearded guy who does mushrooms all the time. He's like, hey, we're going to walk <laughs> through the forest now. We're in an old growth forest and I'm looking for mushrooms. And these things grow everywhere. Dude, I know. And he's like, like I have a lot of friends, like a lot of uh, weed head friends, like you guys met on my birthday, two birthdays yeah. ago, like who are like of the of that caliber, sort of like mountain men weirdos. So this guy like reminds me of that of those guys. And yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. So he tells us an anecdote yeah. where he's like, I used to stutter so bad that I couldn't even look somebody in the face, and then one day, I took a huge bag of psycho -sibilin, sibilian, what do you call them? psycho sibilian psycho -sibilian. Yeah, he ate a whole bag, went climbed on- Climbed a tree. Yeah, climbed a fucking tree. Right uh, before a storm. Right, yeah, right before a storm, and is hugging the tree- up For dear life. And he rides the trip out in the storm on right. top of the tree. Which is awesome in a way. You, when he's telling that story, I, I'm picturing him in his neighbor's bush and there's a yes. there's either a mild a mild drizzle or the fucking yes. or the fucking no, the exactly. lawn the watering is on and yes. it's hitting. I the picture minutes. him passed out behind his parents' garage and a That's cat right. is pissing on his face. He's behind like a metal garbage can. Yeah, Kevin, what are you picturing in it? Yes. I, I I picture that he was actually on the on the tree, in that same tree, but he only climbed it like halfway, maybe. His belt buckle got caught on the first branch. He's upside down. Yeah. He pissed himself, and the water droplets are falling on his face. Yeah, that's exactly. How many people, on. John, are going to watch this documentary? And they're going to like, let's say they're going to have a kid, God forbid, who has a stutter. They're going to be like, I'm. They're going to just force feed the kid magic mushrooms and just yell yeah. at them not to stutter anymore. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because the way the documentary like comes out, it's like, yeah. All your problems can be solved by mushrooms. Yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, John, you don't take magic mushrooms, right? I did one time. Okay. And here's the thing. It was in a party in context. Mm -mm. So like, the thing about it was I had taken before that, like the summer before, when I was 16 years old, I had taken half a tab of acid. And I did go into it like, I was gonna have like this jerk. I made sure that like everything around me was safe. And right. I really did have like somewhat of a like a joyful, like transcendental, like separating of like the self and everything around. But right. I was also 16. So like it was really in the spirit of Youth. Fun. Yeah, youth right. and fun and experimenting and, and looking for a high. Timothy right? Leary used to say, like, you shouldn't use psychedelics if you have, like, the weight of the world on your head because it's not going to work out too good. Right. Well, I mean, I didn't have a bad trip that time, but with the mushrooms, which I don't even know if it was, like, real or whatever. That's the other thing. Um, it was just like I did them in the context of also partying and drinking, and it was like I kind you don't, of... You don't, yeah, you don't know what the... like because you mix the drinking and uh party. You don't even party like that. That's not even something, that's not your comfy yeah. zone. 
So I was, well, I was 19 at that point, and I was like, this is like, I'm just like hung over the next day and don't feel great. So mm, and like shitting terribly, probably. I mean, you know what? I probably was shitting terribly. I probably was shitting. You know, that's the thing. I feel like partying, the shit um, aspect of partying has really kept me away from partying. Mm, like having to take a shit? Like weird shit situations. Oh, I'm talking about like you don't even take shrooms. Like uh, sometimes like you got to take a like a terrible, you take bad farts. You, you start doing bad farts and you shit terribly. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I get up to bad farts, I'm out. I don't want to be farting weird. That's a good rule. That's definitely a good rule. Uh, not all mushrooms do that to you. You know, when you got, you know, when we all first met, I was do doing a lot of magic mushrooms. Do you remember that time, John? I remember when we were at an open mic at the um, Climat. Buddha. Yeah, Climat. And you were literally eating mushrooms out of a bag. Like it was and potato chips. On stage, and then you went on stage and just let the audience feel dissociated. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> yeah, Kevin like even let me do it. Dissociation on them, right. Kevin let me do a show at Zona's once, and uh, I was tripping my fucking ass off. And do you know Rob and Greg, the two brothers from Staten Island? <laughs> I think so, yeah. I think I do know those guys. They, they do comedy in tandem. Yeah. They get on stage, yeah. Yeah, they're like a few, one of the few groups that do that. So they had a guy before them, and then and the guy before them was like seven feet tall, and then they came up, and I'm tripping my ass off, and I'm like, I told the audience, I was like, I gotta tell you, I'm tripping. Were those two Jewish ninja turtles that just got on stage? <laughs> and a giraffe right before them? You know what was interesting? I'll, I do remember your set from uh, Climate that night. Really? And, yeah, I do, actually. Now that you bring it up, and like, Josh, take no offense at this, but not funny. <laughs> but I do remember it because it was filled with pathos. Like, one of the things you just brought up is like, doing mushrooms with the weight of the world on your shoulders like that set that you brought you brought like a very grounded harsh sadness to the moment and it was like bummed the whole room out <laughs> <laughs> like nobody wanted to hear that but that to me is a component of the kind of vulnerability that's re like requisite for good stand-up yeah you yeah. know Amen. Um, I also remember this, and this is one of the theories I have, is that um, psychedelics, especially magic mushrooms, um, and I think after watching this film, you might tend to agree that you might remember this, John. Anytime you've hung out around us, because we used to do, you know, Loa Gigolos here, we'd be tripping all the time too. You would start to bug out. You remember? Well, You'd be like tripping vicarious, you know, like by us. You, you know, know like it's funny. All right. So what they're, yeah, like everybody should. Whoever watches the show should also check out lowendjigalos.com. I still pay for the, I still pay for the, uh, and you should check Don't out our old episode. We would do the, we would do the show there, right? And I, and it would become like, we all would enter a, like a melded mind. Like one of the nice images from this documentary that I really thought was great that they did was they illustrated the internet of trees, mm. like, which is like, this is a thing I've been talking about on all of our shows for like a year already, but the mushrooms create an internet where the trees can talk to each other. And this is like right. yeah. actually very current science, but this documentary like shows it. Like they make an animation where you where you totally see- Right, the mother and the sapling. The mother can talk to like one of her saplings. Everything, yeah, yeah. And it's pretty awesome. And it's like an idea that like I've been really kind of like psyched about. It's almost like, I'm as excited about that as some people are about like the Mandalorian. Like, I feel like mm. that shit just like cycles in my head, tree shit. Um, no, I think that's like one of the most, come on, like, I, I don't know why, I don't know what's happened recently, but there's been a lot of, I mean, it's always going on. Yeah. Like it, it, it goes in, in waves. It, there's been a really high temperature of UFO talk lately. I don't know if mm. you noticed that, John. Well, I remember but, when they were gonna march on Area 51 earlier in the pandemic, remember yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, people that was, are so was, that, was that during the pandemic or before the pandemic? It was right when it started. Yeah, that was when like people still had the energy to like think like they could do whatever they want. <laughs> right. No, but like um, when we would get sorry, together, yeah, like we'd have that internet of uh, connectivity between us. But I feel like that is, we were talked about this on an earlier episode. That's like being open to the moment. You know, like right. 
the three of us are open to the moment. I feel like those type of magical things happen create in creatively when you are like, when you're like confident of your own voice and not like, cause you know, when you guys do shows, sometimes it's like you're second guessing yourself in the moment mm -hmm. or of your bid or whatever. And that automatically closes yourself off from what can happen in the moment. But like when you're like, you say a word, it hits the audience, it comes back to you. And then you're playing in this like ping right. pong. That's where the magic happens. Right. Well, me and Kevin were actually just talking about this. We're like, we were saying like, it's almost, you can, you can almost always be funny as long as you accept whatever comes from what you're doing in the moment. Yeah. The reality. Of sure. it. It's surfing. Yeah. Um, um, no, so I was going to say like, you know, people are so excited about UFOs and extraterrestrial life. I'm like, this is, this is as extraterrestrial as you can talk. Oh, and, and I wanted to bring this up also. There's a new Star Trek show. I don't know if you're not a Trek fan, are you? No, but I think I know what you're about to say. Continue. The, 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 I only saw the first episode and a half. It's, it's another, you know, Star Trek, you know, classic universe. But in this universe, there, there's a war going on uh, with the Klingons and the, and the, you know, Star Federation. And they are using um, fungi and spores as a new mode of interstellar transportation. Whoa. And they base it, they base it mildly off of like what we saw today no, you know, with, the, with the networks. Sorry? The, um, the guy, so like in, cause you guys watched a bootleg version of the documentary, but in the credits, they have the guy from Star Trek, who the guy in the show of Star Trek is based on the guy in the woods from this documentary. Like they based it on him, and he and he was on like an interview show, and the interview guys like, so if uh, if we meet you, like it was like a late night show, but they're like, so if we meet you, uh, will you have mushrooms for us? Like they like wanted to get mushroom. They'll get like oh, it's based off Paul Stamets. Yes, yes, it's based off that guy. Paul Stamets was an uh, interesting dude. Cause uh, I mean, talk about a guy who reaped the benefits of this one, of this <laughs> yeah. one fun of this fungus. I know the guy. Yeah, you know it's funny. It's like probably his whole entire life, probably well into his forties, his parents were like, "When are you going to move out of the basement and stop <laughs> doing mushrooms?" <laughs> but he was like, "No, no, I got something here," and he made a success of himself. Yo, one hundred percent, like. I like that he went from like, yo, this shit cured my stutter. And also I kill ants with this shit now too. <laughs> you know, yeah. He goes, that shit was really cool, man. That, that was he goes, yo, I just figured that shit out. I was like, yo, I gotta tell everybody about this. Yeah, I do love I do I love hope he made some money off of it. I hope yo, I hope he made Oh, you know, he's rich, bro. You fucking bought land in, in Vancouver in like oh, fucking, yeah, that's from his ant murders. Doesn't Let that tell you, you, like, if you kill colonies of living things, you can make with the benefit? Somehow. I don't know if I ever told you guys this, but, you know, I went to Burning Man in 2009. Uh -huh. And I, you remember I told you that story where, like, I was fiending looking for drugs the first couple of days. And then there was this, like, Australian shaman who gave me a yeah. whole bunch of DMT. Yes. You remember that? That guy is this multimillionaire who owns a chain of stores throughout Australia. He tried bringing them here, but the government won't let him called <laughs> Happy High Herbs. It's basically all types of like mushrooms and stuff that grow that aren't categorized as illegal by the government and they sell them to people and they do all different types of shit. But that dude in Australia, he built himself a house shaped like a mushroom. Oh, respect, dude. I did like- So that. fucking cool. Oh, but the thing I also wanted to say, um, the mushrooms, there is a dangerous side. Um, they, you know, they're using it to kill insects and- <laughs> Colin Sick almost stabbed Kevin. Yeah. Of no, well, it wasn't because of mushrooms. What was it because of? It was uh, ayahuasca. Ayahuasca, no, wasn't it? it? Was mushrooms. No. I mean, here's the thing. It's like, there were spirits. Like, our old podcast had this, we had like just oh, random yeah. people. And like, he tried to stab you. Was it ghosts? Was <laughs> it the mushrooms? Was it uh, the... Well, the it was definitely a channeling of energy from an yeah. old doctor that we knew. <laughs> Yo, how crazy it was! Because like he literally oh, picked shit. up. He literally picked up a. a, a Sorry, a, guys. What happened? Um, my I don't know if you heard that, but um, 
Somebody's calling me right now. I did not hear that. Okay, good. Sorry. Put him on the show. Tell put him on the show. I can't. He's on. Um, he Facetime me. I don't need. Oh, I can send him a link. No. Whatever you got. Nah, man. No, no, no. We're good. Like, we're good. We're good. Do, just turn him around so so we can see him. Say hi. You're on the low end jiggles. You're on the. <laughs> you're on. Um. The fuck's name is Wiki After Dark. <laughs> nah, it was good. It's good. I'm sorry. Yeah, bro. no. Like, uh, Colin picked up a pen and went to stab. Yeah. Kevin. We have it on tape somewhere. By the way, I gotta say, like from this documentary, like halfway through it, I already had my phone out and I already put in my Amazon cart lion's mane mushroom and turkey tail <laughs> mushroom. Like I was like literally about to buy the shit. I was like so much. I'm like, oh, I guess I need mushrooms in my life. That's just gonna be what I need to stay smarter, stay healthier. And I'm like about to I'm like seventy dollars, dude. Nah, fuck this. Hey yo, stop being a fucking pandy, bro. Yeah, I'm a really <laughs> buy those shrooms, bro. Now, I'll I'll get you, that's I'll the get first you a thing I did for seventy. <laughs> that's the first thing I did was like Google uh, how to get mushrooms, how to get those kind of shrooms on me. You know, I did, I did. I was like completely hook, line, and sinker, thinking like because that's what this documentary is. Like, I don't so, think this is a good like meaty documentary in the way that some of the other shows that we've watched, like on this, which were like less like visually sexy but more like dense with information this is just like an ad for like two mushrooms like it'll fix your whole life like you just right. ants and they die you don't have ants no more in your house bro <laughs> yeah but you know, those critters like the uh, problem with it is that like i think mushrooms always have like a real barrier to entry because of the kind of people that you become when you start doing mushrooms. Like, it's like, I want to hear uh, Brie Larson's voice be like, you can- Wait, was that Brie Larson for real? It really was Brie Larson. Oh, I had no idea. I didn't even, I don't pay attention to credits. I was just like- No, no, I was just like, I was like, this is like, they had to, they had to like paint a, like a hot girl voice into this. Yeah. So that it had Who's some- Brie Larson appearance. again? Which girl is it? It's Brie Larson. Captain like Marvel. Very, like, girl, yeah, girl next oh. door blonde. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Um, like the the kind of people, the kind of people who are into mushrooms, like even like that scene where it's like, this is like the mushroom Saturday, like go and eat mushrooms club, and I'm like, fucking firebomb these people. Fuck. <laughs> well, like like uh, my man's who cured a stutter. Um, I mean, he wore that hat with so much pride, <laughs> and the whole time, like you see this this. <laughs> this is the pro like I know he's enlightened. I know that he's a very brilliant man and apparently has the best luck in the world. Um he cures stutters, he helped his mom with cancer, who has stage four cancer, which is crazy. Yeah. I don't know if you want to get to it into it now. Kevin, I don't even know if the I don't know if there's three different fat bearded guys or just one fat bearded guy. They all <laughs> look the same to me. Every scientist who talked is just a, fat, a 200, like he's got 350 pounds beard. His fat is coming out. Like, it's just like, I'm like, all right, this is what you trade off. If you're going to do mushrooms all the time, that's what you got to trade off. It's three guys. It's Jerry Garcia. <laughs> Pavarotti. Ben. It's the floor tenors. And then Ben and Jerry. From the ice cream company, you, you know, John. You know, my favorite thing was the uh, the mountain in uh, where is it, Utah or Montana? That's okay. the oldest living oh, mushroom, yeah. like, like two point four billion years old. Holy shit! Yeah, no, that one is only a few thousand years old. So, yeah, what? I mean, no, there was one. There was something like two point four billion years old. No, that's the yeah. that they found a, a fossil that was two point four billion. But they have there's a, a oldest living. Still alive, same colony of mushroom mm. in a mountaintop in like yeah, in like Colorado. Oregon. Yes, yeah, yes. but they said that was that one was nine hundred million or something like that. No, Kevin, it was like I something see. like thirty thousand years old. No, Kevin, uh, it was like two hundred thousand yeah. billion. All right, <laughs> yo, bro, all right, sure, we will rewatch that, but like I'm pretty sure I'm right. Yeah, yeah, or no, Kevin, it was. Thirty-four seventy-five mazillion. Okay. <laughs> I was there. I taped it. <laughs> oh man, I, I just, just, I just like the rhythm of no, Kevin. It's thirty-four thousand trillion. <laughs> like just stupid. Um, I just don't want to give our audience the wrong information. Yeah, I know. You know what? Also, I was, go you, watch it. Go 
watch. I mean, it's if you're even slightly into nature shit, you've already seen the ad on Instagram a trillion times. I, I, it's really fucking good, man. Um, the one, the parts of it that I love the most, you know, um, definitely the cancer patients, you know, who are dealing with their own mortality. Wow. Yo, you did know? they explain if those people were actors or real? <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we make bullshit no, or we're 100% real. Were they people. gonna die? Yes. So they're dead. This is not a. This is not to cure them. Although it does, it helps. Listen, when you're immune, when your body's not under a tremendous amount of fear and stress, stress you live longer. Yeah. You'll live longer, even if you're dying. You'll still your body has a chance to like keep things, you know, going longer. This is more about their, you know, easing their their transition. You know, which as most psychedelics, you know, especially DMT, which is the spirit molecule, but we're talking about cyclosyllabin. I didn't like that the lady, like, if I'm going through that, I don't want you holding, I don't know you, bitch. Why are you holding my hand like this, yo? <laughs> like, as a person has done shrooms, I don't need a stranger in there talking about, let it, let it take you. Yeah, okay. that is amazing. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Don't worry, I, Kevin. no one's gonna hold your hand when you're dying of cancer. I hated those two people. I was like, this is what I can't stand about documentaries because of these, like, um, like the music is turned up, like it becomes like a dramatic scene in a movie, and it's like, oh, I was so lonely, and then God spoke to me. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> your own experience, oh, you froze, you froze. experience. You know, the parts that made me happy and sad, you guys are pieces of shit. Terrible people. Oh, yeah. shit, John Fro. The other part that I, they didn't touch enough on it. I wanted to see more. Um, Cause I, uh, the, the thing I loved about this film is as someone who's partaken in, in uh, you know, hallucinogens, I, I thought of these things before. So they did a study where they started uh, giving it to um, <laughs> I do like typical that. religious figures, so like I'd rabbis. Like this is the still, this and is the still I'm using. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm using that still for the, the thumbnail. <laughs> but no, like I want you know the people who are supposed to be you know, you know from the you know religious part of the world who are supposed to be in touch with the divine on their own to see what happens when you mix this, which oh. Kim's like a, to me, you know. The, the closest thing to a holy experience as you can get, how that, you know, affects. Uh, I, I, I don't remember them giving it to a uh, No, that, that's like, right. At the end, of they started giving it to like- They uh, talked uh, about yeah. it. They didn't show yeah. it. Yeah. Didn't show they it? Did. That's crazy. They should have. They talked about Ram Dass. Did you remember that? Yes, Kevin, yes, remember? yes, yes. I remember. No, I, you're Ram right. Das. They did start talking about that they're uh, going to start giving- an interesting character. This is weird. I don't know what John is hearing and what he's not hearing. Hold on a second. Uh, you can hear everything. Oh, you can hear everything. Okay. Yeah, why am I frozen on you guys? Yeah, you freeze. At least for me, you're freezing up. Not right, me. Now, I'm not. I don't think I'm frozen now. Am I frozen now? No, you're good. You're not frozen on mine, man. All right, cool. I'm good. I, I can see my. Yeah, everything is good. Um, they did say that were they were gonna start integrating major religions with the spiritual experience that you get from magic mushrooms. Now, the thing about it was, th this is the thing. It's like everybody who takes magic mushrooms is like. Let me tell you something. Most important, top top five things that ever happened in my life was like my mother dying, my son being born, and the sick trip that I had on mushroom. <laughs> it's like that is not that's inauthentic. That's an inauthentic experience. Uh, <laughs> no, it's that's not true. It, my problem with that is that it's only one experience. They got to do it for like a few dozen times. Well, I mean, then you're a fat guy, but then at the end of that, <laughs> you're a fat guy who works solely in mushrooms. And also I want to say about the guy whose company it was, it's like he's living in BC. And I feel like when they showed his job, it's like they turned the camera on. They were like, all right, guys, we got to work now. Like <laughs> you drive the forklift, you pick up the yeah. mushrooms. We got to look like we're working for the documentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, I love that. Um... He's like a like recruit, trying to recruit people to work for him, you know. This whole doc is like, by the way, if you're looking for a job, we yeah. don't pay much, but the uh, your lifestyle you, is going to get very narrow. It's pretty much only, be doing mushrooms and getting money for more mushrooms. That's going to be your life. I'm now. Go fucking if, if comedy doesn't work out, I'm going to go do that. But 
The only thing that in the documentary that made me go, well, you know, maybe this guy is not that spiritual and deep is he started playing fucking, what's that horrible music hall? Oh, dubstep. Oh, like this is also, this is why I was like, yes, the people who literally live in the most ruralist areas of British Columbia are not the most cutting edge people. It's like, oh God. <laughs> I, I'm curious to see um, like uh, motherfuckers out in London and shit who don't do this stuff. Like, I now I want to travel <laughs> and, and, and see if I like them better because it's oh, well, so frowned upon there. They made a scene. Oh, um, in, in England. Well, you know, that England, was an interesting. Yeah. They, yeah, what Kevin's talking about is that like cultures, like certain cultures are really into mushrooms, like Mayan culture, like my heritage is like, that's like mushroom capital, but Europe and actually Europe and England being the dominant, like, like America is a colony of England. Like we come mm -hmm. up, we grow out of like the English ideal. Um, like they're against it. I mean, and, and, and it's transferable too. Cause like, uh, when I was a kid, I see the mushrooms, uh, when I would go to France, I see the mushroom sprout, uh, um, across people's uh, lawns. And, uh, I was like, yo, can we just eat that? And then, um, my, my brother-in-law who I kind of don't like, was like, that shit is fucking poison and you'll die. Yo. And honestly, dude, this, this, this fucking stupid documentary does a little bit of a disservice because they don't scare you away enough. <laughs> no, they're in Connecticut. Like five years ago, there was a family from India who used right? to, you know exactly what I'm talking about? Yep. 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 Forage, I don't know. I don't know. Who used to forage for, for mushrooms, like when they lived in India and they were like regular folk and they ate some mushrooms in their backyard. It looked very similar to the ones that they would pick back home. And they fucking all died a family. Like oh, family of four, like yeah. this is like 2013 happened. This is like new Damn, regular yeah. shit. from I'll gun violence. Yeah, they got killed by <laughs> their kid was killed in a at a Connecticut elementary school by who mowed them all down. But they did eat mushrooms <laughs> earlier that day. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, yo, mushrooms. <laughs> it was all chronicled in a song but called "Southern America" by so, no, that, that's funny comedian that. Donald Glover. <laughs> I question. You know, I think I question for about one, it. guys. Uh, how, how are we doing? <laughs> one of the reasons they, you know, the, in the 60s that they, and, and uh, with Nixon, that they made uh, hallucinogens illegal is because they pacified the public. It made people more more calm and less, you know, he even says it. He's yeah. like, you're not going to go and kill someone when you're yeah. tripping. Well, then why, at the same time, would they play such a pivotal part in your extremely psychopathic uh, heritage? Well, here's the thing. I think another thing that the documentary is stupid about is they sort of um, look at history through rose-colored glasses. They're like, the cave people, would, yeah. the cave iteration, <laughs> yeah. would just eat magic mushrooms, get high, and have synesthesia that created, and then they would do open mics. Did you see the part where there was- Yo, dude, I was like, <laughs> gonna, yo, son, I was like, yo, this dude's doing stand-up right now, yo. And he, and, all the other guys are like, what the fuck is this guy doing? He's just yeah, cracking he's, himself up. Yeah, exactly. He's bombing, but he don't he's even know. He's bombing, yes. That would actually be a dope t-shirt showing the evolution of man. And in the last one, it's a, it's him on stage at a mic. <laughs> Dude, the it's such a rose-colored glasses when truly it's like, yeah, man, we got to get back to cave people. When we, Really, what it really was, was cave people literally eating mushrooms, tripping out, raping everything they saw, murdering, and then falling asleep in the cave and doing it all again. And it's like, that is the cruel, oh, cruel it's like history. Like Exactly. Like, uh, cause what happened, uh, those cave people were like, started to, I just, I really killed somebody the other day, right? And then, <laughs> and then his, and then his like, uncle was like, yo, you feel bad about that shit? You wanna feel better about it? Eat this magic mushroom from this cow dung. And meet you two weeks later. We'll figure it out two weeks later when we come to. Dude, you're going to see. You're going to see it was, you had to do right. it. Nobody's dead. Everything is eternal. Yeah. You know what's wild is because, like, the mushrooms that they were eating were growing off of shit of animals that were extinct, like an ambulocetus or something like that. And it's like, who knows what kind of crazy microbes that aren't even around now. Holy shit. I didn't even think about but that. Is, Fuck. 
but it's not the microbes that are making you trip. It's the cyclobin. It's still always going to be that specific here's chemical. Here's what's like really cool about the documentary, which I mean, it was drilled into. Uh, my, yeah. It was drilled into my head through watching 145 time lapse videos of things decaying. Yeah. Is that <laughs> mushrooms are just the essence of decay? Like right now, in my wall, there's a. I I had mice in my apartment, and I bought like poison. So I just put it out like, and I saw like the mice ate it and then I didn't see the mice anymore. And now- like, <laughs> You should have graded those animals, John. <laughs> and now like I have this putrid stink coming from the inside of the wall. Oh. That's, just, that's, all, that's nice. And I'm Me like- Me too, it's called Kevin. <laughs> and now I'm like- Wow. After I watch this documentary, I'm like, Oh, it's mushrooms. They're growing on the <laughs> mics. You should <laughs> go eat them. It's a girl like, now I'm eating the mushroom. I'm eating this mouse and decaying it and bring it back to the, I just yeah. think it's a sexy girl talking to me through it's, the wall. It's, it's Brie oh. Larson. It's Brie Larson. She could... Yeah. She stinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man. I, um, I, I do like, I did like the documentary though. Like it, it makes you like, it, it does make me want to like learn more about shrooms and like maybe in, you know intake a little more. Honestly, your home. We're in pandemic. That was another thing that was brought up in the documentary. Who know? Who knew that fucking George W. Bush was down with mushrooms and wanted to stop pandemics? I, I let Wait, me tell what? you, I was the biggest George W. Bush fan ever when he was president. Everybody hated him and thought he was an idiot. I was like, this guy is the best. Man. No, Kevin, did you, did you get that part where like they were like, there was actually, they were afraid of pa a pandemic. He wanted to get ahead of the pandemic. Why, like, so you, <laughs> yeah, by figuring out like the mushroom connection and like got the like what do you call it? the main guy from this was actually like I actually like Dick Cheney because he helped out. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. I forgot about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, because I'm actually internally grateful to Dick Cheney and George Bush. <laughs> I mean, that's how high that guy is. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but you know, Kevin, uh, Josh, you bring up something that's pretty um, astute about the documentary because, like, there's like an there's like an against. So it's like the hippies were against Nixon, who was a real straight laced, hated the hippies, but. We're just getting out of the Trump presidency. And I've heard a lot of my hippie friends say that the reason that Trump had an appeal were to people that actually had nostalgia for Nixon. Mm. Because in a way, Nixon was a guy who, who like was actually caught for being phony, but talked a lot of shit about how, you know what I mean? It's like the, it's yeah. like your cover, your persona is covering for what you really are, and it's like Trump is like a the second beat of a Harold of Nixon in America. You know what I mean? No, that's interesting. Right. I, I don't agree. I think I, I, you know I'm not gonna tout uh, Donald Trump to the audience, but Nixon was. You're, a but you're a big fan, and if, if you want them, no, to I'm a big. I'm, a, I'm not. A, I'm Alex definitely loves Donald Trump, and will go down for him and MAGA 2020, right? <laughs> yes, but. I'm definitely against Richard Nixon, who was a fucking. So you're more against Ni Richard Nixon. Than he was an anti-Semitic piece of shit, and he was caught like on tape being an anti-Semitic piece of shit. He did do a couple good things, I think, for Israel, but he hated the Jews. Well, don't we had too much control or power? Totally. I mean, when, you know, his acting career wasn't taken off as well as it should have. Wait, oh, hold on a second. Josh, just let it go. That's very true. It's true. Richard <laughs> well, Nixon before he did a whole doc, yeah, it was before actor. he was at Disney, yeah. Richard Nixon to actually- Oh, I'm sorry, that was Reagan, right? Reagan was the actor, my bad. Kevin, you're, listen. Actually, they're all actors. Kevin, I know I was right the first time. Kevin, you're not supposed to know about shit. <laughs> want, right. I don't want to hear you knowing about shit and then fucking ruining a great bit of you sorry. thinking something is right. You're That's right. totally you're stupid. Right. You're right, you're right. All I can say is, is uh, magic mushroom experiences, some of them in my life have been the most brilliant, most beautiful experiences of my life. And, and honestly, I highly recommend them. This ep th Watching this documentary is just a stepping stone to getting to some good, I tripped out on mushrooms and stories.
and hell no, I cannot be taking calls right now. <laughs> um, is, that the, is that the wifey? Yes. Um, I tripped on uh, Halloween. I think we talked about this, right? I didn't. We didn't talk about you tripping on Halloween. On Halloween, uh, Kevin and I went to a bar in the neighborhood. We walked there, and then um, uh, Nora, Doctor uh, Colombian uh, Crazy. Oh yes. Hell yeah. She showed up, and it was her birthday, so she gave me mushrooms, and we had some other friends of ours there, and she ate some mushrooms, and me and I'm not going to mention her name because I don't want to blow up her spot. Right. But me and this girl, Kevin left. He abandoned me. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to be hanging out with my friend Nora, but me and this other girl, who's a friend of mutual friend of Kevin and ours, she's there with her boyfriend and some other people. But me and her ate some mushrooms and we started having this conversation. And John, it was the most beautiful outer worldly body experience. We were sitting, yeah. you know, it's, we're, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So they have the outside enclosure and it's yeah. enclosed with like these plastic oh, dividers. Oh, it's such a stupid New York phenomenon that like, so everywhere in New York, every restaurant that's still afloat has just built like a Sukkot. <laughs> It's a Sukkot. Every restaurant has built a Sukkot outside of their building, like a fucking fake wooden building that's completely right. enclosed. Right. And they're outside. Like, see, see, New York City, we're outside. Meanwhile, it's just an enclosed space. And if you get yeah. people on there, you're spreading COVID just like you are inside. It's the same fucking thing. It's even worse. It's like getting it so that you're 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 not getting just one dose of the sick person. You're gonna get as many as you can. In the you're not only state. getting COVID, right? But you're also getting the cold that's gonna put you in the hospital for yeah. like it's cold. It's cold as shit in there. It's not insulated at all. Well, oh no. Well, then they have like they have like some fucking caveman fireball going off behind you. Oh, which by the way, you can't. I don't know if you could see this. Yeah. I touched the pan. God bless. I touched the pan of the heater the other night. Mwah, you're a yeah, it was great. I was like, let me just I mean I'm, a, I'm fucking five years old and I just want to touch everything. And I touched oh, damn. anyway. Oh, damn. That is beautiful. I I was sitting in this, it was already surreal. You know, people are in their half-ass costumes, but we started tripping, and her and I started having this like heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And the 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 plastic walls that they had put around us, they had this reflection and we just, we, I ended up in this like super beautiful, luminescent, like multi-dimensional place. And her and I were talking and she, she had put some sort of like uh glitter on her face. No, she put a, it's, it's the, almost like she took like airbrush and type she, of girl. <laughs> she airbrushed like spots on her face, almost like a lizard or something like that. But they were like phasing in and out. I was, dude, I wasn't enamored. Like I, I, I like I like the girl as a person, but like for like I felt like true love. Oh, that's it was so yeah, it was so odd, dude. It was but John, so weird. But Kevin, when you came to get Josh, was he actually just tied upside down by his belt button? No, no, I, no. Everything on his face. Uh, close. <laughs> it was close. I I, I left. I, I tried to Irish exit. So I was like, man, I want some ice cream. And I just left, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm, and I'm walking home. Because they were, listen, I didn't feel like tripping that day. I was offered to trip and I was like, I'm good. And then, um, and uh, when you're not tripping and everyone else is tripping, that is not fun. Yeah. Right? So I, mean, I Or it I, could be. I mean, every time I've been around you guys tripping, I also mentally tripped. It really depends on how much you want to get into it. I just wasn't in the mood. and uh, wasn't in the mood. So I walk, I'm walk. i walking away, and I realize fucking Josh has the keys. So I have to go back to get the keys from Josh. And he goes, I'm like, can you give me the keys? And he goes, "Did you? were you going to leave me? I'm like, yes. <laughs> right? And then he goes, did you eat ice cream outside of the bar by yourself? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. No, I just wanted the Irish exit. I just wanted to where Kevin go, Kevin, and I wanted you to be. Like, I don't know. It's just some shit about ice cream. It never came back. And Kevin was like, also, he had a sheet of paper. Where he was like, I finally did an Irish exit. <laughs> <laughs> October thirty first, two thousand and twenty. I finally did. I check. <laughs>
It wasn't. I didn't do it right, so I have to. I have to put it back on the list. No, but John asked you something. He wanted to know what. How did you come back to see me? How was I when you found me? Um, Not the first time. The, I, I knew. Like I had a decision to make. Do I tell Josh that I was gonna leave him? And within five seconds, I was like, definitely leave these people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're, yeah, go ahead. Are you, I was just. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I. I can't stop. I have to stop the podcast to to clarify this. Are you wearing a generic St. Yeah. Mark's place yeah. like tourist ass t shirt of New York? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this T-shirt, by the way, if you go to St. Mark's Place in the city, which is a <laughs> hovel of what it used to be, but like, it's like, you're like this, that shirt is like, I went to New York City this weekend and look what I got. No, that's, that's the original. Listen, let me tell you something. You know why I bought this? You wanna know why I bought this? Cause that day I took mushrooms and, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? <laughs> when tourists wear it, it stinks. But when I wear it, it's real. I love it. I love it. And you know what's weird? It's so amazing that it took me like, I don't know, whatever, 40 minutes into the show to be like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Is he really wearing a fucking <laughs> totally? It's so new. It's so yeah, awesome. That's great. I like that. It's, it, I mean, if I like that it says, fuck you, you right now. Yeah. No, it is great. It's perfect. <sighs> Yeah, uh, I did a set with this one time, and John, and the least funniest people, uh, came up to me that day, and was like, "So you, uh, so you're 13 years old now?" <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can imagine being like that. Shirt will get all the different type of responses from so many different crowds of people because it does make it like for me, it reads as like. That's a very entry level. That's like you're 13 years old and you went to the city, like you snuck to the city yeah. from Long Island. You went to St. Mark's Place. You took the subway from um, Penn Station to like 8th Street and you went to St. Mark's Place and then you bought like like a bong. You bought the bong yeah. that Josh has, the yeah. Ricky Morty bong, and you bought that shirt and then you got on the train and went back to Long Island. And uh, I, I've worn this shirt in different, different states, like out and about and forgetting what it says. And it gets wild reactions. It gets like, like 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 people look at me like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> like uh, it, it is so it's, oh I don't I forget that people live differently. Like they're they're more humbled and homey and like no, but I can imagine like because you know it's so funny how like um like New York is layers of experience on layers of experience like the hipster like. The girl, you know, girl HBO's Girls era, yeah, New York. I don't know that I don't know knows that shirt because their experience of Brooklyn has nothing to do with St. Mark's. It has to do with like Williamsburg and Bushwick and all these mm -hmm. places that are not like on the radar of like a person who was around New York like in coming of age, like you know, a decade earlier. You know, uh, like I know how corny it is to wear this shirt. And I was like, I like that it. it's kind of corny. For some reason, I'm like, I'm gonna wear it because people don't won't wear it if you're from New York, mm. right? So I'm like, well, fuck it. Now nah, I'm gonna wear it. Yeah, yeah. You got a problem? Many. The only people that have ever approached me was an old woman. She was like, I like your style, right? As a as a human being, she said that to me. Like she was like, I like your style as a human being. You're very in your face. And then she told. Then she held your hand and was like. Let it come over you. See <laughs> me. <laughs> and then I was adopted. And then I asked her for the keys to her house so I can stay there for years. Yeah. Um <laughs> no, and then uh and then those two comedians uh who should remain nameless. Well, comedians dissed your shirt. Yeah, I was hurt. Let me tell you something, man. If you if you care about what another man's shirt is, you got no. That's white, true. A hundred percent. No shit going on in your life. A hundred percent. Like being concerned. <laughs> fashion, the right, man. Yeah, being concerned with fashion at all is, I don't know. I can I consider extraordinarily little dick behavior. 
I gave Kevin a uh, a shirt like that. You still have that shirt, Kevin? Yeah, made in Mexico, made in Cancun. Cancun. It says uh, it says F, and then a blank, and then it says C K, K. and it says All I need is you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff, man. Good stuff, <laughs> you know, was, uh, just to just to circle back to the pot to the thing. You know, what was cool is that in World War II, uh, penicillin is just mold. Mm-hmm. And they would put moldy bread on the oh, war. Was Civil War, they World said. World War II. World War II. And fucking the Nazis was... and the Japanese didn't have penicillin, and that yeah. actually helped. That was wild. Yeah, but, that but, is crazy, though. But, John, I, I was thinking about that, too. Did that really, or did did it do it because it, it kept soldiers healthier and more alive? Because I don't think if someone was that wounded... They were going back into the war. They could put whole I, loaves of bread. They could just put I, they could get moldy I, loaves of bread and just stick it on them. Well, you're confusing it. That was from Civil War, I think they said. No, that was no, that was too. That was there. That's when they were yeah. sticking those loaves of bread. But the thing is, I'm saying they weren't bringing their soldiers back to life with it. I think maybe it was more of a mental <laughs> thing. Like people thought fighting for them, we at least won't get gangrene. I, I think it was like you. You're gonna live. Uh, you can come back from the war, right? Like psychologically. The so, fuck like, are you talking about, dude? So, like, was was used to like fight the infections, right? But like, I, I, what I'm saying is like, for the for the someone who like that would be like imperative to them not dying. I mean, you could die from a, a small infection. What, what, what I'm saying is, they people see that you can come back and live a relatively like, normal life, and then others other soldiers will be like, okay, I can go to war and come back. Like we have penicillin now, right? right. Like I won't get a gangrene. On you my know, like hand. my leg can be blown off, but I'll be all right. Like, yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna say yes. You guys, you guys are absolutely right. Correct. So, <laughs> yeah. And, the and German, they mentioned that that the Nazis really didn't have penicillin. They kept just doing exper- uh, experiments on, um, you know, Jews from the tra- uh, concentration camps, and they're like, it's not working. Yeah, I don't know why the Germans were Mexican, but <laughs> throw some more, throw some more of their noses on it. Yeah, yeah. oh my god, moldy pieces of bread. They were just putting like a Jew's ear on the. Bread. Oh yeah. my goodness! Oh, my and it would god. fucking grow. It would fuse to, the, and then you just have an ear growing out of your. Skin. <laughs> what What about um? What about that French cheese? They said the blue one for Fortet. What is that? The one that oh, has the blue, blue lines cheese. in it. Blue cheese or Roquefort? That yeah, they said, and they said that's actually penicillin in it. Mm, that sounds delicious, dude. I maybe love that it. helped the French out. Maybe that's why French were so virile and strong. I'll, I'll tell you something. I every morning with breakfast. Here's how I live, dude. Here, let me just fill you in on how I'm slowly killing myself. <laughs> every morning, I eat a breakfast. I I eat breakfast, and now I can actually wake up and get like a couple. Like this week, I've like not been able. I was wake up in the morning. I'll go buy food finally, and I have three eggs. Mm -hmm. I'll cut one of those chicken sausage with like apples in them and shit. Yeah. Okay. And I'll have slices of Vermont cheddar cheese. Mm. Make an omelet. I will have that for breakfast. (laughs) I'll have that for breakfast. And honestly, dude, that's all I need. I eat like once a day too now. Yeah. Like I don't. I'm not. I realize I'm not exerting as much energy. I, I, I was eating. I, I eat because I'm bored mostly. Respect. I'm mo- that's not, or I'm sad. Or or, or, or yeah, I feel doesn't eat. He just he just drinks 800 calorie drinks from Starbucks. I do that too. I, I am guilty of that. I, I need a crush. I need something. Mm. I can't go. I can't go cold turkey when it comes to like changing my diet. I gotta. I need a little bit of sugar. Yeah. And by a little bit, I mean like. Something that could kill a diabetic. Beautiful. I mean, I am not like I have not like I'm not into sweets at all. So, but I do. But like I have been like when I when I go to my girlfriend's on the weekends, I do like like she'll have like ice cream, and it's like I'm like holy shit, they make this shit. <laughs> like, no, holy shit. I will tell you something about shrooms, and uh, I, I took shrooms one time. And I just heard that like that little voice, whatever it is. Oh, the like, hey, buddy, buddy, it's getting a little out of hand. Oh wow! You gotta start working out. That was me, Kevin. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I mean, Josh will say like he'll say wild shit to me. I'm like, I gotta work out because I. But um, 
but like I had, I heard that voice like a couple of times, like uh, as I did shrooms, like hey, hey, buddy. Eventually, it's gonna catch up to you. The other day, it took like I had to do something to get out of bed where like I needed all the force for my legs to to leave the bed because <laughs> I. I <laughs> I had to roll out of bed. You, 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 you had to use inertia to get off. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, oh, this is this is getting bad. I got to start working out, and wow. I got to start like really start. Tr- I get trying like to pulling pull- in your room Wait, like a pulling in a rope. The shrooms told you. The shrooms were the one to tell you <laughs> that you were a fat ass. I knew I was a fat ass, but it was like, hey, it was like a a, a deep talking to like. Mm. That's cool. Maybe they should rename Magic Mushrooms to Real Talk Asylum. You know, I took mushrooms when I was a big fat ass, and they never said that to me. They were very kind. I think mushrooms, one of the my, I had one but one or two bad trips. But other than that, Magic Mushrooms were some of the most. I didn't consider that a bad things. trip, though. Huh? I, I didn't consider that a bad trip. I had a bad trip. Let me tell you about oh, a bad trip. Okay. Go ahead. Tell me about. It. I actually do want to know about bad trips. Well, I've told you this story before, but again, we'll reiterate it for the people who haven't heard it before. When we were like 17 or 18 years old, my friend, her mother had a house in the Hamptons and we went up there, me and two guy friends and her. So a girl and two friends, three of us, four of us all together. And uh, we brought a bunch of pot. We brought a bunch of weed. We brought a bunch, you know, all different types of stuff. But my friend, Eli, at the time, he had been selling magic mushrooms and he had sold a pound, I think, and he had the remainder of it, which was just like the shake at the bottom of this pound of shrooms. And it was all spores, like just like it looks like dirt, but that is where like, yeah, that's the mushroom, part of it mushroom cum. <laughs> yes, exactly. He had mushroom nut, keef. And we got there the first night and we all took, I remember we took a, a, like a playing card and we folded it and we were doing scoops and we did like a scoop each. Everybody tripped so fucking hard, but we had an awesome trip. Everybody had a great time, but it was intense. I could handle it. <laughs> I just remember the story. I could handle it, but they, they couldn't. But, you know, because like I'm a, you know, a cosmonaut. And you're also anyway, 800,000 pounds. Exactly. And I was also 400 pounds or whatever at that time. And then we went well, 734 trillion. <laughs> I was never that fat. <laughs> but then we wake up the next day and we started cooking like pot brownies and stuff. And we're smoking blunts and we're cooking pot days. brownies. We're I, hanging miss out days, I miss Bender days. I was I want out. one more bender. I want one, one more bender weekend for no come, reason. Come come to uh come to our apartment. Come to our apartment. <laughs> And just do it, like I'm being a pandy. I'm being a pandy, like don't be a pandy, bro. Yo, we we'll get you an air mattress, or if you have one, we'll, we'll find. We'll, you know, yeah. You I sleep mean, you with can go back to trying to convince me to move in again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we start. We start cooking. We're, we're making trays of um, of weed brownies, and I go. You know, we're all in the kitchen. I'm like, let's throw some. Let's throw some of those mushrooms in there, and everyone's like, no way. They're like, it was too much last night. Like, they're like, I can't do that again. And I was like, come on. And nobody wanted to do it. And then two of them left the room and it was me and Eli. And I looked at Eli. I was like, come on, we got to put some of this in there. And he was like, let's do it. And we threw like two giant scoops full of these spores into the pot brownies, put it in there, threw it in the oven. Then we go back into the living room. We smoke a blunt. We were smoking Godfathers. That's where you empty a Philly out. And then you stuff it full of weed so it's as thick as a regular cigar. Like, like ridiculous amounts of like pot for no reason. You're not getting any more stone. But we're smoking and we're smoking. And then we go out. We're like, let's go out to eat. And we went out to a place in the Hamptons called The Palm. You know The Palm, John? No, but I was out in the Hamptons today. The Palm is like this super fancy steakhouse restaurant. And we get there. And I'm like my giant fat ass and everybody's there. And we're like, just like living very uh, lavishly, you know, like, you know, very uh, excessively. I ended up ordering the biggest, I was like, I was like, oh, they got lobsters here. I was like, all right. I was like, give me the biggest lobster you have. <laughs> I swear they gave me like a four and a half or five pound lobster. It was like the size of the table. It was like that. 
it was the most disgusting thing in the world. I don't know if anybody ever told you this, but the bigger a lobster is, the, the less good it tastes. I didn't know this. I fucking hate, I hate the experience of eating lobster. Like it has to be super hot for it to right. be any good. The minute it's like a cold, fleshy, gross thing that you're crunching and it's like, oh fuck. It's disgusting. You're eating a fucking cockroach. I loved it when I was a fat guy, but I'm, a, you know, I'm vegan. I haven't had anything like that for six years, but it was good, but not that one. Anyway, we smoke like motherfuckers. We go, we pig out on this fucking food. We're coming back to the house after eating at the restaurant. We're like, let's eat those pot brownies. And we're all like half drunk and stoned out of our asses. And we take the tray of pot brownies out of the oven and, you know, everybody takes a piece and everyone takes like one bite, two bites. And, and they're like, oh, I don't want any more. And I end up eating pretty much the entire tray. Mm. And I'm sitting in the house and I look around the room and everybody's like this. <laughs> Eyes closed like this. How great. How great would be. Uh, every, they were passed out cold. <laughs> I thought in my head that I killed them. Mm. And it was like February. And this is the Hamptons. It's freezing outside. Yeah. And I go on the balcony and I smoke a cigarette and it's freezing cold. And I'm like, oh my God. I Because I didn't tell them I put mushrooms in it. So I thought I poisoned them. Mm. So I was like, oh my God, I poisoned everybody, this and that. I was convinced I murdered everyone. My friend Eli comes outside. He's like, what's the matter, bro? I was like, look inside. They're all dead. I killed everyone. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, they're walking around. And I look back into the house and everyone's just walking around having a good time. <laughs> but I had already convinced myself that I had killed all my friends. Mm. I gave myself the worst trip in the world. I went, I ended up spending like eight hours in the bedroom by myself yeah. and I couldn't stay in one position. If I stayed like this, I wouldn't be able to breathe. I had to move like this every two seconds. God damn. Then I was like, let me try to take a shower. That was your, oh. by the way, that was your fat man tits collapsing on your heart. That's what <laughs> Kevin knows. Nice, nice one, Kevin. Full <laughs> jabs in there. Yes. Kevin knows. <laughs> so then I was like, let me, let me try to sober up. John, I go into the shower of this house in the Hamptons. And I was like, all right, I was going to sober up. I'll feel better. I turn the water. I get in the shower. I turn those. I'm expecting a nice, pleasant, warm shower. I turn the water on. Ice cold water. <laughs> oh, my God. Hits my giant fat body. And I swear I thought my heart was going to stop. I was like, it was so cold. I was like, this is it. I was like, I'm going to collapse on the floor. They're going to have to, like, come pull my fat ass out of this fucking bathtub where I just died. Anyway. <laughs> I survived, and uh, that was my one. I had one or maybe two bad mushroom experiences, but those were self-induced, as you can see. Um, the rest <laughs> yeah. have been extremely Guys, pleasant. Remember, remember, Josh had that experience because those mushroom experiences were self-induced. Okay, <laughs> that's why it was a problem. Right? Don't do. Don't. Don't try to poison your friends with mushrooms yeah. and don't be a giant fat ass and you'll be okay two things to watch out for when you're going to do mushrooms listen when you do mushrooms you're going to turn into a giant fat ass you don't have to start as a giant fat ass <laughs> uh uh and my man uh he he was in his auditorium at one point the, yes. the, my man's from the, from the documentary yeah my man what's his name again hold on i wrote it you down. Had the guy who saved his mom stamets paul stamets paul stamets with the wild hat on, it was it looked like the um, it looked like the first version of the pussy hats in 2016. Yes, that's what it looked yeah. like to me. It was a little voice inside of him saying, "Wear this hat. It's a good <laughs> hat, man." Yo, and but what I did notice when he's in his auditorium, they like went to the crowd. I was like, "There's some beautiful fucking women in that crowd." Did you notice that, Josh? No, I didn't look. I didn't see that. Oh, I was like, "Holy shit." Hey, this is why yeah. he's on tour. You would think it would be filled with like our our crumb level cartoonish like hairy people like no, mushroom, but no. the, there's a lot of um, symbiosis with that community and like and like uh, the, the tech community and with that is wealth and with wealth wealth attracts better looking women. I did sure. like that within what's his name's within Paul Stamets's story about how he did a bag of mushrooms was on a tree and then stopped stuttering. The first thing that happens after he's like, and I asked the girl out and, no, I, I yeah, did like and that. she went out with me and she was blowing me by the end. And of I it. got some 
Pupupus. <laughs> <laughs> You know what though? That is a again. He's recruiting. He's recruiting nerds, the brightest minds in the world, like these geeks. Like, hey man, Shroom's got me some pussy. <laughs> yeah. So come work for me, dude. You can find your wife in this shit. You yeah. see, the, I bring you on <laughs> tour. You see these whores. <laughs> but it's true because what it's what it's what essentially he's saying and what it is is it's it's bravery. It's it's being willing because. It's a scary thing jumping into the unknown and taking mushrooms is not for the you know weak of heart. It's a scary, powerful experience. You know, Kevin's making fun of the, the hospital thing where the lady's holding the people's hands. They're doing it like that for a reason because people can have bad trips. People do get overwhelmed. It is, it's very profound. You know, I- No, I'm, I'm making fun of, I wouldn't want that to be a stranger. I get it, but these are, you know, I'm sure they built a rapport by yeah, that time. Sure. But again, it's it's a very profound thing. And like we've done, you know, this episode, I, that documentary did it a service. I, I hope we didn't do it a disservice by by mocking it or joking too much. Because the truth is, I think it is the future. I think it can be one of the most beneficial things to mankind, especially in terms of dealing with people with traumas, with PTSDs with addictions, I I think it's gonna, you know, the lady said, you know, if we allow it, you know, it can work very quickly. Oh, you know? I'm, not, I'm not denying any of that. I just like to poke fun at some of the- No, I agree. It's a comedy podcast. We're supposed to make fun of things. <laughs> I think the fat person inside of Kevin is upset with mushrooms. <laughs> no, I agree with you, Josh. I'm glad you uh, said that. Cause like, we're gonna really close the episode up. But like, for me, I feel like this, I agree with all that, but this mushroom did try to like, put everybody on team mushrooms and listen, I'm team trees. Like I don't, I know, I don't like to go out and take a stand on anything. I Can they exist like, without each other? No, I mean like- I Can think, mushrooms and, and trees exist without one another? No, for sure not. Like for sure it's a symbiotic relationship, but like, I just want to like make this arbitrary stand. I want to take an arbitrary stand and be like, I'm on teachers. Usually I just want to stay detached from life altogether, mm -hmm. but I want to come out and say team trees for me. Arbitrary. Yeah. You put arbor in arbitrary. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So thank you very much, guys. This has been, this has been three fun guys talking about three, but uh, what the fuck is it talking about? Um, fungus. Fungus. Fungi. Uh, fantastic fun guys. Fanta we're fantastic fun guys, dude. I like that. Uh, it's nice. Yeah. Gonna, that's the name of this. That's the name of this episode. Yes. Fantastic fun guys. <laughs> Wiki after dark. Peace. <laughs>